If you've been following our iOS news lately, you've probably heard that we're now using CocoaPods as our primary way of delivering our libraries to iOS developers. Hooray! But you might have also noticed that there are sometimes a bunch of different CocoaPods that all refer to the same library. For example, for Google Analytics, there's Google Analytics iOS SDK, Google Analytics, and Google Slash Analytics. So what's the deal? Are these any different? And if so, which one should you use? Find out the answers to these questions and many more of life's mysteries on this episode of Route 85. Hi there, I'm Todd Kerpelman, and let's go ahead and review these three Google Analytics CocoaPods, shall we? So this first one, Google Analytics iOS SDK, was created by a couple of loyal fans on the internet back before Google started building its own CocoaPods. Since then, it's been deprecated in favor of the Google one, so I wouldn't use it if I were you unless you like deprecation warnings, I guess. Weirdo. That said, if you've got a project that's been around a while or are watching an older YouTube tutorial, you might see this one mentioned, so it's good to know what it is. But you know what? Let's remove this one from the running for now. See ya. Ooh, that, was, that was unnecessarily violent. So as for these next two, you're going to see this pattern happening a lot in the CocoaPods that Google provides. You're going to see Google Analytics and Google Slash Analytics. Similarly, there's Google Sign-In and Google Slash Sign-In, Google Cloud Messaging and Google Slash Cloud Messaging, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So what's the difference between these? The short answer is that the Google Slash CocoaPods include everything these other ones do, plus some utility files to make your life a little easier. Let me explain. See, around the same time we introduced CocoaPod support for iOS, we also announced this cool new configuration tool designed to get you up and running really quickly on a bunch of Google services. Here you can see it in action. I'm creating a new iOS project, and I'm going to enable a number of services for it using this new configuration tool. Here you can see that I'm enabling Google Sign-In, and it's automatically setting up an OAuth client ID for me using sensible defaults for everything. I can also create a new Google Analytics property without having to jump to the Google Analytics page, enable app invites for my app, and uh, get some test ad units from AdMob without having to go to the AdMob site, so on and so forth. Normally, I'd have to visit like two or three consoles to get all this work done, but now I can do it all in one place, which is nice. And then you can see that when I'm done here, I have a plist file that I can download. What's that all about, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Good question. See, this file contains a bunch of constants I can use to configure these services that I'm setting up. Things like my Google Analytics tracking ID, my OAuth client ID, AdMob test IDs, and so on and so forth. In the past, you had to copy and paste these constants from all these various developer consoles into your code, which left an awful lot of room for error. But now, thanks to a nice little utility library we've created, you can tackle a lot of these configuration steps with one single configure with error call. When you call this method, Google will find the plist file that you've added to your project, grab the constants from there, and configure your Google libraries for you using these constants. But this only works if you have the Google slash analytics pod installed. You see, the Google slash analytics pod is a superset of the Google analytics pod. It contains Google Analytics along with some of the utility libraries you need to do things like read in that plist file. If you were to just use the Google Analytics CocoaPod, the version without the slash, it would give you Google Analytics without any of the utility libraries. Now that would still work too, as long as you set up your tracker the old-fashioned way, which means calling GAI shared instance tracker with tracking ID and copying and pasting that constant from the Google Analytics console. So which one should you use? Well, if you've got an existing project and you're just looking to replace the old Google Analytics iOS SDK CocoaPod with the official one, you can probably get away with using Google Analytics, the version without all the helper libraries, because you're already setting the tracker ID manually. Now, granted, using the Google slash Analytics CocoaPod will also work. It'll just include a few libraries you don't necessarily need. Go on, get out of there, you crazy kids. Now, on the other hand, if you're creating an app from scratch, I would recommend using the Google Slash version of the CocoaPod and configuring everything up using the new configuration flow. So there you go, folks. Mystery solved. Give these new CocoaPods a try. And more importantly, give this new setup flow a try. It is the most fun you will have all day configuring API libraries. And I will see you soon on Route 85. <laughs>